Circling back to our top story, China has paid tribute to its late former president, Jiang Zemin. The country came to a standstill as sirens sounded for three minutes this morning. Our top leaders gathered at the Great Hall of the People for a public memorial service to eulogize Mr. Tiang. President Xi Jinping called him an outstanding leader, and Mr. Tiang's death last week marks the end of an era. He's remembered as a transformative leader who paved the road to incredible growth by opening up the country. And for more, joining us live is John Donaldson, Associate Professor at the School of Social Sciences from the Singapore Management University. Now, John, much has been said about China's economic growth under Jiang Zemin. Apart from this, what do you see is his most enduring legacy? I think beyond the uh, explosive growth that China experienced under Jiang, there's really two. One is that he continued Deng Xiaoping's opening to uh, to the world, unprecedented levels of foreign direct investment, opening up uh, increasing numbers of cities beyond special economic zones. Uh, and of course, uh, some of uh, the engines of China's growth, uh, Shanghai, which was the city that he uh, himself managed while he was a local leader in China. But at the same time, there was great inequality that in increased uh, between the coast and the inland areas, uh, between urban and rural uh, during Zhang's time. And uh, Deng Xiaoping's uh, dictum that uh, you know, that some will get rich first really was underscored under uh, Zhang Zemin, that while many prospered, there were many people who were left behind. In rural areas, there was an erosion of the education system or the healthcare system, even as uh, the, the urban areas uh, developed quite rapidly. Oh, John, still, Jiang Zemin's death has set off sort of a wave of nostalgia in some quarters of Chinese society. From your observations, what are you seeing and how are you reading this given the current COVID context? I think uh, I think it's interesting to compare. So, for instance, comparing uh, Jiang's send-off with Deng Xiaoping's send-off. Uh, when Deng Xiaoping uh, uh, was mourned, it was uh, uh, it was great. Um, uh, sadness. There was almost histrionic uh, reactions to it. Another comparison we could make is the treatment of Hu Jintao, who famously was unceremoniously ushered off uh, the stage. Uh, that is uh, Hu Jintao, which is uh, Xi Jinping's uh, predecessor. Uh, and, and so compared to Hu, Zhang's treatment has been better. But the other question is, the other comparison that we can make are the deaths of two earlier leaders, uh, Zhou Enlai in, 19, uh, in the mid mid late 1960s, and Hu Yaobang, uh, who died you know, right before the Tiananmen Square uh, protests. And both of those era, uh, eras ushered in times of great uh, turmoil and uh, instability in China. And so the question will be, will Zhang become, will Zhang's funeral, will Zhang's death be that kind of a moment? My own reading is that Jiang was not nearly as popular as either Hu or uh, uh, as uh, uh, Hu Yaobang or as uh, Zhou Enlai, uh, but uh, and, and so if there are any protests that are happening, it's more of a mark of the unpopularity of Xi Jinping than it is a mark of the popularity of uh, Jiang Zemin. And, and John, uh, let's move on to Hong Kong, perhaps, which will also remember the former leader quite fondly. Uh, some analysts saying that at the time he did set just the right tone for the one country, two systems there. How would you compare that with the current political climate in Hong Kong? And yeah, it's a it's a very interesting contrast uh, that that Jiang Zemin not only came into power at a time of great turmoil in the wake of the Tiananmen Square uh, uh, movement and repression of it, but also the Hong Kong uh, handover, which really was a major um, uh, uh, event and was very stable compared to many people's uh, fears. The promise that the political and economic system in Hong Kong would not change over the next uh, 50 years, uh, many people held hope that that was going to be true. And in fact, that Hong Kong might be a driver of further reform. But those hopes in those uh, uh, days post uh, handover in many ways have been dashed um, uh, and more recently uh, uh, suppressed in, uh, as China has taken an increasingly heavier hand uh, on on, uh, on Hong Kong. And Comparisons, of course, being made between Xi Jinping and Jiang Zemin, as you mentioned earlier. But 
Mr. Jiang was not in every respect the opposite of Mr. Xi. For one, he also took a tough stance on Taiwan. Some analysts, however, say he was in power at a time when things were different during a relatively conciliatory period in China's foreign relations. Uh, would you agree with this? It's true that, that, of course, conflict with Taiwan, Taiwan is always China's one of its, if not the biggest foreign policy issue. And that was also true both under Xi as well as on, under Jiang. But the way that Jiang negotiated that kind of an issue uh, with former U.S. President Bill Clinton, for instance, uh, led to a great deal of stability. It was a, 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 also a time where really things could have gotten out of hand as, democ as uh, democracy came to Taiwan, as opposition and pro-independence leaders uh, um, uh, like Li Donghui were elected in Taiwan. It really could have been a situation that came out of hand. China made its um, uh, its uh, opinion clear. It uh, said uh, very clearly that independence for Taiwan was not acceptable, but it stopped short of the kind of saber rattling that you're hearing increasingly today. Uh, Professor, thank you very much for your insights. Pleasure speaking with you. That was John Donaldson, Associate Professor at the School of Social Sciences from the Singapore Management University.